Connor Harding, you decide Connor guard or forward. Let's go forward. Okay, forward, we're going to go forward for Connor Harding. He's a stretch forward. He can shoot it from outside. Connor, huge win for BYU basketball uh, against Pacific on Saturday night. And, and huge in that you maintain second place and you keep pace to uh, finish in one of those top two spots. How much is that on the mind of the team, knowing that, hey, if BYU finishes second, you get a bye into Monday at the West Coast Conference Tournament? Yeah, I think I think that's our goal right now for Positively Sure is to finish second in the league. You know, every game is, is getting bigger and bigger at the end of the season because our goal is still to make it to the NCAA uh, tournament. And the way to put ourselves in a position to do that is we have to finish second. We have to get those byes. We have to stay rested and be ready to play in the tournament. I mean, that's big. So from a from a player standpoint, you know, I, and I can I can say this, I, I I have experience playing, and I understand week in and, and week out, you know, how important games are when something as big as this is on the line. So with with you guys and, and your team, um, how much does that play a role into your preparation and going into the games? And maybe let's say if you see somebody slacking off our practice, you're like, no man, come on, let's 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 get it going. You can't have no no Twinkies right now. We gotta we gotta finish second. <laughs> No, that's, that's a great point, and our focus is, you know, it all starts in practice, and, you know, when our practice is not going good, we all huddle together, and we say, hey, you got to pick it up. We got to pick up defensively, and we'll stop practice. You know, Yoli or TJ or Luke or one of us will stop practice and say, hey, this is not cutting it right now. Love it. You know, and that's what happened early on in the season. We didn't really have that, that, that leadership, that edge to us, right. but later on as we went, we're like, we got to get it together, and so that's what we started doing, saying, hey, man. Let's go. Let's go. Let's Let's go. go. It's time. See, so. th- that, that explains a lot, Spencer, because as, us as, as analysts and as fans, you know, for you guys to, to pick up the last couple of games, and especially on the defensive side, you know, it's like, you know, what is it? Is, is it you guys are just more comfortable? Um, are you understanding the schemes? Are you guys putting more effort in? Are you running sprints? <laughs> you know, you're getting punished. <laughs> but I, I like that, what you said, the, the leadership. Yeah, you know, and that's and that's where it starts with with the team is the leadership. And, you know, I think that's where we focused on a little bit. You know, we haven't really changed anything. It's just, you know, our attitude that that we've changed on and off the court. Mm. Connor Harding, BYU freshman forward with us on BYU Sports Nation. I talked to you right after the game on Saturday night about your role and how it evolved in that specific game against Pacific. TJ Haas goes one for eight, does dish out a bunch of assists, but his usual uh reliable shot not dropping how does your mindset shift when you see some of those guys and their shots aren't falling yeah you know when I when I see that you know I got got to step up and you know TJ and Yoli I mean they're pretty consistent um, day in and day out and so when I see you know when people get in foul trouble you know I got to step up I got to get more rebounds I got to find my shot I got to cut more I got to do things that will help my team you know within the flow of the game obviously and so that's just what I try to do, try to keep the mindset of just being aggressive and being myself. Are you aware when your shot is fault? Like, are you, are you so in the game that you're not really paying attention? Or do you know, like, oh, I'm, I'm feeling it tonight? Yeah, you, I, that game, I, was, like, I felt like the focus in that game. Like, and I was kind of feeling it. Like, everything I felt like was coming off. Like, the shot clock was running down one time, and I got a little step back, and I thought it was in. I was, I was getting all excited about it. And it went <laughs> off long, but I just felt good that night. So... That's always a good feeling. Is that everything just slow down and you just kind of, it's like that Michael Jordan um, moment or LeBron James moment or even going back to when you were kids, right, in the, in, in the front yard and you're like, hey, you know, two seconds, two seconds left, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Did you go through that in your mind? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, st- I still do. I mean, as a little kid or right now, you're still in the gym and you're like, you're, you're going through plays and you're running it through your mind. And so, you know, you get into that focus, that mindset every once in a while. I think it's pretty rare sometimes, but when you get into it, it's, it is, it's yeah. awesome. It is, it is rare. You got, sometimes, sometimes you accidentally drink Michael's special juice, and then you, <laughs> get, you get that focus. <laughs> uh, can I get some of that special juice, please, just for life in general? Uh, Connor Harding with us on BYU Sports Nation. Out on the road this week. For what I am real, I'm really looking forward to this week because I think there are two significant challenges that await BYU basketball, starting with a very good San Diego team on Thursday. They're coming off a tough loss against Pepperdine, and then you get LMU in Los Angeles on Saturday. What's the hardest part about playing in the West Coast Conference when you're on the road? Um, I think the hardest part is just, you know, adapting to, to the different environment and the atmosphere that you play in because you go to the Marriott Center and we have awesome fans and it's loud and it's, you know, it's upbeat. And then you go to, the, you know, the smaller gyms and, you, you know, you have to pick it up mentally. Yeah. You have to get yourself going. The bench has to get people going on the court. And so, you know, that, that's, that's really hard. 
But, you know, overall, it's just hard to win in the WCC on the road. You know, their, te their teams are really good, and the teams are really good, and, you know, but just, just the atmosphere, the change. What's the best way to manufacture energy when you're playing on the road? Get a stop, the very first, the very first play on defense. It, I mean, offense, you know, that just comes, that comes along, but if you get a couple of stops at the start of the game, then that brings energy. So when you guys have had success on the road, and, and you think back to those moments, like Spencer asked, is it just the stops, or is there more things that has helped you guys gain the energy or, you know, stop the opposing team's momentum? Yeah, you know, I, th I think, I th really do think it's like the stops or like a, like a charge or something like that, and then a quick basket. And that just, you know, that builds confidence on people on the bench and on the floor, like, you know, let's go. Like, everyone's going to be hitting this game. Mm. And so, you know, it, we just build off each other. What do you know about San Diego basketball right now after some film review as you prepare for the Toreros on Thursday? You know, they're, they're a solid team. I know, I know their point guard, Isaiah Wright. I played against him uh, in Idaho, and, and he's a solid player. And he makes, the right, he makes the right play and the right decision. He's pretty good defensively. And so whenever we play good against a good point guard, you know, our defense, we have to, we have to keep to our scheme. And so that's, that's kind of a little of a worry, but nothing that we haven't handled before. What, what are the keys to the victory to, to winning that game for you guys? You know, I think the give me, keys... Give me three, give me three, give me three. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you three. Okay, okay. We're going okay. to we're gonna have to win the rebounding. Okay. Um, we're going to have to win rebounding. Defensively, we're going to have to what we call kills. Mm. We're going to have to get our kills. That's three stops in a row mm -hmm. uh, throughout the game. Is there a number that you, that you aim for? Yeah, and so if you get three stops in a row, that counts as a kill. Uh -huh. And so I think we go for like four or five kills in a game. Okay. And if we... If we reach that, we usually win the game. Okay. Uh, and that's okay. a stat that, uh, that uh, Nate Austin keeps on the bench. And, nice. and he yells it out, we got to kill. And the whole bench, and that's what gets us excited. Nice. And nice. So, uh, so rebounding, kills, and then obviously I think a big one is we're going to have to at least get 15 assists as a team. Okay. 15. You want to share the ball because not surprisingly when a team shares the ball, you – do some good things offensively. Now, BYU has been so good as a team defense against Portland, LMU, and Pacific. What kind of uh, defensive challenge do you have in, in stopping San Diego? Because typically, they're not a super high-scoring team, and they don't mind playing at a slower pace. So, I mean, if you had to hold them under a certain mark, what, what would it be? What, what are you aiming for? i say under 55. Under 55? Yeah. And, and and we'll we'll for sure win the game. Are you saying that, or is that the is that the game plan? That, the that's what I'm saying okay, right now. Okay, okay, that's okay. what I'm saying. I respect that. Because <laughs> you know, might as well keep it rolling from all the other games. Exactly. You know, keep it going. Exactly. Well, you guys, you guys did it before, right? And and you guys are getting the momentum. Um, and and it, let's let's actually talk about that from a, from a player's perspective and standpoint. When you guys have been struggling for so long with certain aspects of the game, and then you come out, you do it, right? You change things up, leadership, right? You start to see that. Then you see kind of the, the, the evidence of what that did. And then you go, huh, I got some confidence now, right? So what's the difference been confidence-wise and swag-wise since you guys started seeing success on the def defensive side? You know, um... The guy's smiling. <laughs> <laughs> he should yeah. be. You know, and I, I love that, the, 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 you know, we, we walk around with some swagger, like, you know, we're going to get up in you, yep. and we're, we're going to beat our opponent mm -hmm. across from us. And I think that's the kind of the attitude we have, like, we're not going to back down. And, we're, you know, we're going to get stops, we're going to get right up in your face, and then that leads to the offensive side of, of being aggressive. Mm -hmm. And so then we walk around, like, we're going to kick some people's butts like that, you know, and that keeps from practice and keeps going and keeps rolling. And I think that's changed our team overall. You've been contributing uh, for a while now, and you've stepped in nicely, but it's been eye-opening to watch the uh, switch that has flipped for Gavin Baxter because in mid to late December, he was going through some stuff and was kind of second-guessing himself, and he was really sped up and didn't play a lot. Now it's like he's turned into a different player. Why is that? You know, I just feel like he just got comfortable with the flow of the game, the pace of the game, and then he just started building his confidence in that, and then... Now you see the product of that. Right. The dude's yeah. a freak on the court. I mean, you lob it up, he's going to dunk it. He alters shots. And shots that you don't think no one's going to touch, the next right. thing you know, he tips it up in the air. And so, you know, I'm, I'm really happy for Gavin and what he's done. All year, as coaches, as players, like, we knew that we needed Gavin. And eventually we knew he would, he would come around. We just didn't know when. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's hard as a freshman or as a player when you go through your little, you know, 
yeah. your slumps. Yep. Yeah. You know, I kind of went through a slump just in the last like month or so where I didn't really have a spark to me or anything. And then finally, you know, you have a breakout game and you start building on that. Yeah. And so Gavin, he stepped up. All right, let's do our part. And uh, I know you're new to Studio B, but when you come on the show, we give you BYU Sports Nation karma. And you're already a good player, but uh, more often than not, you take this karma and it boosts your game. I, I need that. I okay. love it. <laughs> I, go ask your teammates. Go ask your coaches. Go ask Coach Lacombe about the BYU Sports Nation karma. He'll tell you all about the validity of it. It's legit, man. It's legit. We'll <laughs> we also see. would like you to... Uh, Sign our uh, Sailor Coog flag before you leave the studio. So, Connor, great to have you. Thanks for joining us, man. Thank you. Connor Harding signing the flag. It's going to be worth something someday, Brian. I hope so. I'm going to <laughs> I'm gonna try to steal that from you guys secretly. <laughs> don't, don't tell nobody that. Coming up is a game and a half lead in the standings. A big deal or no deal right now? Uh, speaking of BYU basketball and more from you as we go to Voice of the Nation. That's right, Connor. <laughs> 